Namaste, this is Dr. David Cruz. Welcome back to White Coat Medicine Talks. Today we're going to be talking about something kind of interesting, and we're talking about rabies. Now, why are we talking about rabies? Well, it's, it's very deadly, and so we want to talk about this so we can know about how you can get exposed, how do you treat it, and what to do when you do get exposed. People usually think of the virus as getting it from a dog or a cat even, but you know, other animals do carry the virus as well, as well, raccoons, skunks, foxes, even bats. So you can get it from a bunch of different animals. And now that people are out hunting and are in the brush, you have more potential for exposure to these. So before we get into the main things about rabies, let's say it is preventable and you prevent it by getting the vaccine. So your pets have to be vaccinated and people can be vaccinated for this. Those people that are at high risk for exposure that deal with animals daily should be vaccinated as well. Those people that travel to other countries where rabies is very prevalent or those people that go into caves a lot or hiking should probably be vaccinated as well. We will talk a little bit more about the vaccination itself later, but let's get into the symptoms of, of rabies. So if you are bitten, so if you come in contact with the saliva or with brain tissue of a dead animal, that would be an exposure, especially if it breaks the skin. So if you have saliva that falls into a cut, that would be an exposure as well. Now, it wouldn't be an exposure if you're exposed to the blood or the feces or the urine of the animal. Um, now the virus does die once uh, something is dried out. So it dies pretty quickly after that. So if there's feces, it'll probably dry out and then the virus would be dead. You wouldn't have an exposure like that. So as soon as you get exposed, the first thing to do is wash out that wound, soap and water. Use that, clean it very well because that will minimize your chances of the exposure to this. Next, make sure you see your doctor as quick as possible so that you all can decide whether the exposure warrants you getting an immunization for that. Now, it's going to depend a lot on what kind of exposure it was. First of all, was the attack provoked or unprovoked? If it was an unprovoked attack, so say an animal just attacked you, chances are that it, it's more likely to be a rabid animal. And so that may lead to immunization uh, at that point. Now, if it was a provoked attack, sometimes that's less likely to be from a rabies infected uh, animal. And so we worry less about that. In addition, we have to get animal control involved as well as the health department. And here in Laredo, we send patients over to the health department and they start the immunizations right off the bat. If we have to give the injections. If possible, the animal will be observed. Uh, if the animal is dead, then they send off the brain tissue to check for the virus as well. So we depend on laboratory data as well to see if the animal was infected or not. We also, after the observation and laboratory data, we also worry about, of course, how it happened, where it happened, and what kind of animal it was. If it was, uh, say, a raccoon or skunk, a bat or anything like that, you're probably going to get the immunizations. So what are some of the symptoms? Hey, they can start as easy as just fever and headaches and weakness, and that would be all. And you would think not much of it other than it's just uh, another viral infection. However, things will progress from there if you do have rabies. If it's a fast, uh, infection, then you're going to get some insomnia, some agitation, confusion, then you may get some partial paralysis as well, or tingling and twitching. Pain to the area as well can happen. As things progress, you may get hallucinations, you might start salivating quite a bit, you might have dysphagia, which is trouble swallowing, and then eventually it leads to death. The incubation period can vary quite a bit. It usually will be a few months, maybe two to three months, but it can be as fast as one week or it can be one year. And if that virus is in you, you have the potential to get the disease. And as we mentioned, it goes into your central nervous systems, causes brain swelling, 
and eventual death. Whether the disease occurs slowly, where you slowly get paralyzed and go into a coma, or it occurs rapidly with all the symptoms that we mentioned, the eventual outcome is brain swelling and death. So let's go in more into the vaccine. So there's different categories. Now, if you were just petting an animal with rabies, you don't need any immunization for that. And if it scratched your skin, then you need immediate prophylaxis. Now, if there is a bite, you also need immediate prophylaxis and vaccination and clean the wound as fast as possible. Remember, exposure to the saliva is the important part. If you are exposed to saliva by a bite or by just the saliva, a lick into an open wound, that would be exposure. So on the first vaccine, you're gonna receive the immunoglobulin and the vaccination, and then you will receive another vaccination on day three, day seven, and day 14, which would complete the series. It is not really a painful vaccine, and you get it in the arm, and hopefully that should take care of the issue. Your doctor is probably gonna put you on antibiotics as well, so you don't get a bacterial infection on top of that. And you do wanna follow up with your doctor to make sure that you're keeping track of one, make sure there's no infection, two, make sure that the wound is healing well, three, make sure that you keep track of the animal or the labs that had been done as well. And in addition, the health department will follow up with you usually as well. We see dog bites every day, and it's very important to vaccinate your pets. I cannot stress enough that you have to get your pets vaccinated and keep those records on hand so that people, if they're bitten, they know that they are safe and don't have to undergo getting the vaccine. And if you're out in the brush, stay away from vicious animals, stay away from those animals that we've mentioned here, the raccoons and the skunks and the foxes, and try to avoid any exposure to the rabies virus. For White Coat Medicine Talks, this is Dr. David Cruz, and we'll talk to you soon.